Hey, thanks for joining another video, everyone. Um, in today's pattern, I'm going to be tying one of my personal favorite um, bugger patterns for steelhead in the Ontario Great Lakes region. Um, in the vise, I have a size 10 streamer hook. This is a 3x long version. Um, I like the longer, sort of bigger profiles for the for steelhead. Um, and for my bead, um, I don't have a name or a brand, um, but it appears to be a 3.2 millimeter um, in color pink. Um, I like this this pink. This seems to produce a little bit more. There are versions of, uh, I guess, more of a brighter a shinier version of the bead. I'm not sure if that's gonna come through or not. Um, but this one is more got like a, a shine to it, um, which for whatever reason just doesn't work out great for me. Um, so I like to put on this pink. And for my thread, or I'm just gonna be using a standard black uh, UTC 70 denier. And we're gonna go ahead and start our base right behind the bead here. And I'm gonna wind that down right before the bend of the hook. For my tail, I'm going to be using two tones. Um, I'm going to be using a pink and a black marabou, but I'm going to start with the pink, which is going to be the bottom half of the tail. And I've pre-prepped these in the interest of time. Um, I don't think anybody wants to watch me prep marabou, but basically nipped off some ends, made a nice tail for the bottom portion. I'll measure this out roughly about a hook shank and then adjust as needed. And before I secure it in, I'll just take a quick look on what that length is gonna be. It's a little long. So that looks about better. Secure that in. And now the next portion, <clears throat> the top half of the tail, I'm going to be using um, just some black marabou. And I pre prepped this as well. And I want just a little bit less than what I put on for the pink. I want more of the pink to show up. But we'll see how it looks and add or take away as needed. So I just kind of want that to sit on top. That's actually laid down nice for me exactly where I wanted it. thread up to the front. Then lock that down in there. Now we're gonna secure this all in nice and tight.
I'm just checking around the fly to make sure everything's sort of sitting where I want it. And instead of some flash that's typically put on tails, I'm going to be using some pearl unimylar. Sorry, that thing looks very beat up. But I'm just basically going to take I'm going to nip off one strand for one side and then I'm going to repeat the process on the other. So what I do is because I actually I want to lay this down um, or lay it across the body as well eventually in a later step like so. So I'm actually going to measure it like I would a tail like that and then I'm going to flip over the other side. So. Um, apologize if you can't see this, but what I'm doing is just measuring it out on this side, the length that I want. Going to secure that in with two or three tight turns. And then the butt end of it, I'm actually going to lap over across itself and lock it in some more. Okay, so now I'm going to repeat that process for the other side of the fly. Okay, so it looks like that. So this piece is actually what I want to keep on the tail. This was the overlapping piece, which eventually I'm going to swing over across um, the body as well. So that's in place. And to help with some durability um, on the hackle side of things, um, if you ever notice that the hackle is usually the first thing to come loose, um, once you get like a tooth on it, It'll cut the hackle um, and just start to unravel. And so to help with that, I um, saw a couple videos. Um, I think Sven Diesel did one, and I thought that was a fantastic idea. I'm not sure if he came up with it, but I thought it was amazing and changed all my buggers, um, the longevity of them at least, and the durability. So I'm going to be putting on just some tippet here. Um, just to help with that. So I'm just going to secure that in again. I'm going to use it at a later stage. I'm just going to end that right at the base of the tail. I'm going to keep that off to the side for a bit. Now we're ready to tie in our body our abdomen. For that, I'm just using some ultra chenille in black. Um, I like this for this specific pattern, um, just simply because it's much thinner in diameter and help, help keeps a, a thinner profile on the body. Stripping off the ends to help secure it in. Now we're going to grab our our chenille 
and we're gonna start making some nice wraps for the body. You could put super glue, you could put a base here if you wanna make it basically impenetrable. Um, I, I, I put a lot of good tight securing wraps with the chenille. You can see I'm holding the hook, pulling and wrapping at the same time, um, just to help with that durability aspect of it. And then I do wanna leave just a tad. I could probably squeeze in one more wrap here, but I'm not, because I like to build a nice thick uh, collar with the hackle on these, on this specific pattern at least. Just did a couple in front, a couple behind. And now what we're gonna do is just grab those butt ends of the Pearl Unimylar. And I'm gonna bring that across like that, just trying to show you here what I'm doing on this side. Secure that in with two wraps. We're gonna do the same on the other side now. Just making sure that it's nice and nice and straight before I lock it in place. Should do it. Now for the hackle, I'm using the Whiting Farms. Um, bugger pack and I'm just going to essentially just find a size that I want. Again, this is a size 10 hook, um, but I typically will just eyeball it. Something that I think looks right. And it's not bad. So I'm going to take this feather. Like I said, I wanted a thick collar, um, so I don't want I don't want this stuff, but I may want this more webbier stuff for the collar. But that might be too big. Maybe not. We'll try it out. I just don't want that. I really don't want the really super thick part of that stem or else it becomes, it doesn't really move well. So I'm gonna go a bit lower. So it looks something like that and you get that natural thinning profile as it gets to the tail, which gives the bug a nice look. One, two, I'm gonna bend that stem over just to add some more durability for this, for this hackle. Nip off the stem.
So we'll nip off that stem. And now we're gonna start our wraps. We'll see which way this thing wants to turn. Perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, a healthy two, two or three turns right at the collar, right behind the bead, um, just to add some more thickness there. And now I can work my way backwards towards the tail. Oops. And now that's, this is where the tippet comes into play. So I'm keeping tension on the hackle and I've grabbed the tippet with my left hand and now you can switch and I'm just going to go now the opposite way starting right behind that tail to secure that in and then once you have good tension with the tippet you can let go of the hackle keeping that tension and then I'll just do some I'll do a few I don't know, two or three pretty wide open spirals, trying not to trap too many hackle fibers. And then I'll end right behind the bead. Okay, once that's secure, you can come nip off the tippet, you can nip off the tag end of the hackle. And now I'm just going to sweep everything back a little bit. a decent little collar here now we're ready for a whip finish And then with a bodkin or um, a brush, you can come in here and just kind of give it a little brush to, to take out any trapped fibers um, when we wrap that tippet. Just to give it that nice profile. And then for my, um, for my little flash I have here in the tail, I'll cut it on an angle uh, just to give it that little extra uniqueness, give me a little bit more confidence on the water. And the very last step is just a healthy dab of glue for this, because I don't like, and it drives me nuts when I put glue on my hackle, it just kills it. So what I'll do is I'll sweep everything back and I'll actually dab the head, that's the, the bead. And it's going to go in naturally there. It's just going to fall into place. And there you have it, folks. 
This is probably my favorite steelhead woolly bugger pattern. It's just so productive when all else fails. It's almost like my cheat fly. Um, it gets the it gets the fish going. So hope you give it a try. Thanks for watching. I appreciate any support. Um, please subscribe, share, like, click the bell thingy, all that stuff. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you tune into the next video. Cheers.